Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to create a histogram using Microsoft Excel. So before I get started with the details of uh, how to use the data set and, and build the uh, and execute the function that runs the histogram, I want to make sure that you have the data analysis menu item available um, in your version of Excel. If you go to the data ribbon and you do not see data analysis available over here, it's a quick fix. You go to File, Options, Add-in, second to last, Analysis Tool Pack. Down here make sure this says Excel Add-ins. There are a few different options. Excel Add-ins and hit Go. And you can see that Analysis Tool Pack is already checked off. Of course, if you didn't have that button, yours would look like that. And you would click it, hit OK. And when you came back to the main screen uh, in this uh, worksheet, you would see in the, under the Data Ribbon that the Data Analysis button was available. This opens the dialog that has uh, the histogram as well as many other uh, useful statistics. So let's take a look at the data and how we can build a uh, table from that data and then how to build a chart. So I have this already complete, but I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch. So let's look at our minutes of study variable. So let me explain. This is a fictitious uh, data set that I created uh, for videos like this. So let's assume that you are a researcher and you have a particular exam that you administer to students. And it has information that can only be found on computers that you have in a computer lab in a secure room. And in order to get into that room, some, a student has to use uh, either has to sign in, like maybe there's a proctor there, or they have to use some sort of ID card or ID number. So what you can do is you can track how many minutes a student would go into that room and use one of those computers to study. And you can track the, the number of minutes to a high level of precision. So each one of these rows in, in column A represents one observation. And for the purposes of this video and this demonstration, one we call case, record, or participant. So this would be uh, 50. This is 50 uh, observations here. This would be 50 unique students that each studied for an exam for the number of minutes indicated uh, in each of these cells. So after collecting this data, you want to build a histogram to see what the distribution looks like. Does distribution look like a normal distribution? Is there kurtosis in the distribution? Is there skewness? Uh, or just for uh, general information, you know, you, just to look for a general, uh, just the general descriptives of where students tended to fall in terms of minutes of study for this exam. You know, do they all do they all tend to fall in the same range, or is it relatively spread out? Well, a histogram will give you a graphical uh, illustration of that uh, of that data. So you have this data, and then you create what's called bins. So I have column A, minutes of study, and on all the minutes, column B, I have bins. And you can see I created 10 bins. Now the important thing about bins, there's a few important things to understand. So let me just start at the very first number I created and explain why I created it and what it means. The, the value of the first bin is 30. Now this does make sense because my unit of analysis 
in this particular example uh, is minutes. Unit, unit analysis is in minutes. So my first bin value is 30, which means Excel is going to report the number of observations that occurred under 30. And then my next, under 30 minutes. And then my next value is 60. So it's going to report the value between 31 minutes, the number of observations rather, that fall between 31 minutes and 60 minutes. So these represent ranges. And you can see over here I've broken those ranges down uh, in a way that's more useful for labeling. But in order to execute the histogram function, the bins need to be set up like this. So we know that even though I've typed 30, that really means, in this particular case, it means 0 to 30. And this means 31 to 60. And this is a range of 61 minutes to 90 minutes. You'll also notice that the interval is identical, meaning 60 is 30 minutes away from 30, 90 is 30 minutes away from 60, and so on. This is important when you're building a histogram as well. You want the bins and the way that you've arranged them to be logically congruent to the data that you're examining. So you might look at this and say, well, for the purposes of your study, 10 bins is too few or too many. If you think it's too many, you could set this to 60, 120, 180, 240, and 300, and have five bins, each of which represents one hour. Or if this was too few, you could set it to every 15 minutes. So with this data, the data in column A and the data in column B, we have everything we need to run a histogram. So I'm going to delete the data that I've run, uh, the, the uh, data that was returned from the previous analysis. And you can see that that dynamically changes the sample histogram, this chart. I will also build this chart from scratch as well. But I wanted to leave this up here to show you how it it dynamically populates uh, using these selected ranges uh, here. So to analyze this uh, data, you go to Data Analysis and select Histogram and hit OK. And this is how it appears um, the first time you run it. If you run it a second time, the data will already be populated. It retains the ranges that you put in. So for my input range, I want to select the minutes of study, which is A1 through A51. For the bin range, I want all the bins, including the first row. Make sure that the labels box is checked. And down here for output range, I have this set as D2. That's all you need to do. And OK. You can see the chart has dynamically populated. Now you'll notice that the values that I had in here are now gone. So I've copied them over here. So I can plug them in and have it back the way I, ha I uh, had it before. When you're running your own histogram, of course, you won't have these values copied on another worksheet. Uh, so, for example, this bin, its original value was 30. That's how it looked. You would just go in and um, type 0 30. And then this would say 60, put 31 60, and so on until you've completed all the bins. So what this table tells you is how many observations occurred within specified range. So how many observations occurred between 0 and 30? Well, according to Excel, it's 1. Now this column, minutes of study, is sorted in ascending order. So the lowest value appears up top. And you can see that it's 18. 
which of course is between 0 and 30, but the next value is 33. So Excel generated the correct answer, uh, correct value. Similarly, Excel indicates three values fall between 31 and 60, and you can see just real quickly, that's true. So this table gives you everything you need to create a chart. So let's now create the chart. We'll create a chart similar to the one I have here. You'll start by highlighting frequency and then all the frequencies, going to insert and selecting column, and then a 2D column. I usually delete uh, frequency. Uh, it'll sometimes it'll say series if you don't have a, or it will say series on a label. And let's just call this one histogram, obviously you'll want um, a different title, uh, one that connects to whatever content you have when you run your own histogram. So you can see it still looks very incomplete compared to the one I have there on the right. Next thing you want to do is add bins, the actual bins rather than this one, two, three, four and the way you do that is to select data and edit the horizontal axis labels. For this one, I do not include the word bins. So you can see here uh, it's getting a little closer. They're still missing a few components. Let's go to the uh, layout next and put in the axis title. So we'll do the vert vertical title. And the vertical title is uh, frequency. Or well, that's certainly one choice. And then the horizontal title which displays below the axis, uh, the x-axis here. Uh, I think minutes of study uh, would certainly make sense here. You could also say minutes of study for a, the particular name of the final exam. Uh, whatever you feel would fit and would make sense to your reader uh, based on the context in which the histogram would be entered. Uh, for example, um, in a manuscript that would be submitted for publication. Now you can s this looks pretty good, but you can see the um, I'm going to leave these as blue, but you can see the red ones look a little sharper. So you actually click on the bars here, and move to design. And I like to go with the 3D uh, look and then you right click and format the data series. Let me show you that one more time. Format the data series. And you can see uh, no gap and large gap. See this slider? No gap. And other than the color and the uh, title, you can see that you have a chart that is essentially the same. And that's how you create it. So let's review quickly the parts of a histogram. You first start with the data you're interested in analyzing. You then create the bins, uh, being mindful that uh, they represent the value, uh, the, the number of observations to fall below that value up to that value. We run the function that produces this table and then we relabel the bins so they're a little bit more logical and easier to understand for the reader. And then we produce the chart, which is the actual histogram. A quick note over here, you'll see I provided the mean and the median of this data as well. Uh, this uses the average function for mean and the median function for median. 
So that's how to go from a set of data through the steps to a completed chart, a uh, completed histogram. I want to thank you for watching my video. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I will be happy to help you.